All right. Let's go looking for some more side quests. Uh, let's... Off the top of my head, we have the person in the courtyard. Who is the fifth summoner's court battle that we have? Maybe it'll be a professor. Mm. Oh shit, it actually is! <laughs> You're my summoner's court opponent, Professor Ronan. Indeed I am. <laughs> Professors are allowed to have fun once in a while too, you know. I hope. Of course. I look forward to playing against you. And I you. I've been playing this for eons, so you haven't the chance of winning. How about we get started anyway? <laughs> I'm ready. We'll see about no that. Time like the present. I've been doing a pretty good job. Ooh. That's a tempting one. Oh, hell no! Yeah. I do not recall teaching you how to play like that. <laughs> that me knocking the ball off wasn't intentional, but woo, it worked out. <laughs> that last one wasn't intentional, but this one, this one. There you have it. Yet another opportunity to learn and improve. No, I... I think we're pretty good. Oh, no. Although that is inconvenient for me. We all make mistakes. True. Well, it sucks that you're blocking my way here. But I made it so you have secret and points. There you have it. Yet another opportunity to learn and improve. Delightful to see such mastery from one your age. We were so rude to the professor. Oh my god. Well done. You've beaten me at my own game. Well, I was gonna say, you're the one who taught me. I had a good teacher. A flatterer, I see. <laughs> Although I dare say it's not unwarranted. I shall accept the compliment humbly. <laughs> Good. As the new summoner's court champion, you have earned a token of recognition. Do not let it go to your head. What do I get? Is it just a clothing item? It's a clothing item. Woo! <laughs> Some gloves! These three look like they're up to trouble. Even if I knew how to get into the other common rooms, I wouldn't bother. There's a reason I was sorted into my house. Your broom looks like it's done the rounds of every chimney in Hogsmeade. And some. My sister was going to buy me a new one, but then she took up a new hobby and that was that. Oh, what sort of hobby? Writing essays on Patronuses. How do Patronus essays interfere with buying you a broom? She was enchanting quills to write the essays, going through ink like a crop at a water bowl. When I reminded her about the new broom, she simply said she'd run out of money from buying all the ink. <laughs> what an abysmal sister. She's not an abysmal sister at all. She's entitled to follow her own passions and not be beholden to others. But she'd already told him she'd buy him a new broom. That's an agreement. You can't go back on it for a whim. What's to say broom flying isn't a whim? What's her Patronus anyway? Perhaps abysmal people don't have them. <laughs> Oh, stop it. Well, I bet it's a big, fierce bear. Why would his sister's Patronus be a big, fierce bear? You've never even met her. Why would you possibly think that? No, she's right. What? What? It's literally that. A big, fierce bear. <laughs> I knew it. Well, if she can muster the power to conjure a Patronus, I reckon the least she can do is repair your broom. I've sent her an owl with a drawing of your decrepit thing. I reckon that'll give her the hint. Scoundrel, my broom's in perfectly good shape. If the shape you're after's a chimney... <laughs> it would be far more enjoyable if the Prefect stayed out of the common rooms. 
Should get rid of the lot oh. of them. Nothing worse than students practicing jinxes on each other in the common room. Can't take a step for fear <laughs> of having your legs turn to jelly. Someone was practicing with a broken wand in the common room last night. Looked like a war had broken out. Ah, there's only one common room that everyone wishes they could get in, and that's Hufflepuff. <sighs> Been that way for a thousand years, or so Garlic says. Eh, I'm fine with the Slytherin common room. It's pretty nice. I mean, I've, I've seen glances of the Hufflepuff common room. I still haven't like actually like looked directly at it in like a video or something, but what little glances I've seen, it looks cozy in there. I haven't seen Gryffindor or Ravenclaw at all, um, but Slytherin's Slytherin's nice. I I enjoy dark, cool atmospheres. All right, so. We've got... <laughs> I think we've got four side missions left because of the challenge regarding side missions. 28 of 32. We've got one. It's a map one. And then there's the... Okay, so there's that. So that makes three. And I wonder where the fourth one is. There isn't, like, anywhere else for me to, like, go to, right? Hmm. Well, I'm not seeing anything on the map. I guess we'll just have to see. Maybe the last side mission w waits for me to actually, like, do the main story mission. Uh, so where the hell is this one then? All's bell that ends well. Uh, south wing? No. Here we go. Hufflepuff in the astronomy wing seems to set about something. Perhaps I can help. It took me a little bit to find it. All right. <laughs> it's funny that I struggled finding this, considering I was away with standing next to her earlier. Coming. Pardon me. Is everything all right? No. No, it's not. We only had two bells to go, but she just had to go and spoil things. I'm afraid I don't follow. Who spoiled things? Also, what bells? <sighs> Professor Black ordered Mr. Moon to take down the bells in the bell tower. Said they were giving him a headache. Those bells are a part of Hogwarts. I wasn't about to let that happen. So, I asked my friend Adelaide to help me put them back. We've always been a duo of sorts, Adelaide and Evangeline. Addie and Evie. Anyway, it was going swimmingly until Black started asking questions. Then she wasn't comfortable with our rule breaking. Now I'm stuck, unable to tell which bell goes where. I already did the bells, I think. Is it really that important that the bells go back up? Is it really that important? They're part of the school's history. Those bells likely told a young Merlin that he was running late to charms or called Ignatia Wildsmith to dinner. We can't simply fiddle with history. We're meant to be its stewards. Eh, I mean, history disappears all the time, so I mean, the bells being down is whatever. Uh, but I'll still help. It's certainly an odd decree, even for Black. Taking down the bells for a headache. I agree. I thought it might also have been that they interrupted his hourly naps. That's all he does in his office, you know. But then I heard... Can you keep a secret? I can. I heard from Alice, who heard from Ollie, who heard from Eugenia, that it's because the bells reminded him of his wedding day. Oh no. Breaks out in a sweat every hour on the hour. But mum's the word. All right. Like, poor Professor Black, I guess. If only two bells are left, isn't it fairly easy to tell which goes where? Easy for you, perhaps. I happen to be tone deaf. Yeah. Mother likes to say I couldn't carry a tune if it hopped on my back like a chocolate frog. No point putting them back in if they don't sound just as they did before. 
for the sake of historical accuracy. All right, well, we'll see what I can do. I guess maybe there are other bells I didn't Perhaps I could help put the bells back do. up. Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. The bells are in the bell tower just above the music room. You're certainly of more help than Adelaide. I was going to say, I that or I did do it, and I could just finish the mission immediately. The bells are back up, Evangeline. Ah, oh, you're a credit to the school. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait for the headmaster to hear them. I wish I could see his face. Future generations may not truly appreciate what you've done, but I do. And I hope that you do as well. You're welcome, Evangeline. I don't know how much this means for me and for Hogwarts. Easy peasy. Nice. Alright. Let's head over to Hogsmeade. For the other mission. The unicorn one that I've put off for quite a while. Let me fast travel. Thank you. Fun fact. I really like the name Evangeline. It's one of those names that I've always been... Or not always, but like... In, the last decade or so, I've been like, that would be a pretty swell name to give a daughter, if I ever had one. But that is probably never happening. Pardon, but would you mind helping out an old woman? Is everything all right? Oh, bless you. Oh, thank you for asking. I'm Betty, Betty Bugbrook, and no, everything is not all right. It's my dear friend, Hazel. Oh, she's in trouble. Is Hazel, Hazel a unicorn? Yes. Oh, she's a unicorn. <laughs> Known her for years. She doesn't like to leave the forest, so I visit her once a week to brush out her mane and bring her some treats. Her coat is glorious. Well, the last time I saw her, we were violently attacked by a pack of wolves. Hazel, loyal friend that she is, leapt in front to protect me, and in the process, I fear she may have been injured. I'm sorry to hear that. I want to help her, but she seems to have gone into hiding. Out of fear, I'd imagine. I know you Hogwarts students learn a fair bit about caring for beasts. Perhaps you could find my unicorn friend and get her somewhere safe so that she can heal. Yeah, I could look for her. How did you become so close with the unicorn? It was luck, truly. I came across her when she was a little golden foal. Didn't even have a horn yet. Oh, she trusted me straight away. We'd play together for hours. Oh, I do hope she'll be all right. Unicorn hair is a valuable wand core, and I suppose losing a hair or two mightn't hurt her. But I'm terrified those poachers will want her for her blood to keep themselves alive. <gasps> and that is more than I can bear to think of. Yeah. That doesn't seem like a nice thing to do to I'll unicorn. I'll keep an eye out for your unicorn friend and take her to safety if I see her. Oh, you've a good soul. I can always tell. Please, don't risk your own safety, though. I don't know precisely where she is, but I can tell you that her den is north of Hogsmeade. And although I haven't been able to brush her lately, I imagine she still has the brightest, most beautiful coat of her entire herd. Maybe. <laughs> Remember? Oh, shit. Done. Brilliant coat, oh, and be warned, she's a stubborn girl. She may need some convincing to come with you. I need to look By for convincing you me, I have to capture. Bright coat. Sounds as if she's in trouble. Beautifully bright. We'll see. It could be entirely standard. Oh wait, hold up. Music guy. Here you are, a true. Have some more coins, Ernie. Very generous. Thank you. One day only. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's, he's successfully gotten six instruments up. He keeps his his dialogue keeps getting cut off though. It's really a shame.
but I'm happy to have made a big difference in your life, eh, uh, Ernie. I almost called him Eddie. Oh, wait, hold up. I'm gonna break into this building, uh, uh, Ernie. A little more. The lock calls to me. Field guide page in here. Say that oh shit, fellow got what he deserved. No, oh, he absolutely did. Exploding bonbons. These treats explode when eaten. Although they are unlikely to cause serious injury, one is advised to choose or chew carefully. Oh, that sounds dangerous. But I guess that's what a lot of the candy Rebellion. candies are like here. Oh. Damn, now I want a treat. Fizzing Whizbees. These delicious sweets, rumored to contain billywig stings, are small sherbet balls that, when consumed, will levitate one a few inches off the ground. What if you had a whole bunch of them, though? Is it just a field guide page in front of the store? Yep. Honeydukes. Honeydukes Sweet Shop sells a variety of magical sweets, from fizzing whizbees to exploding bonbons. Customers would be wise to know precisely what effects they may experience before sampling this shop's wares. I just gotta eat this, you know, there doesn't seem to be any problems. <laughs> and these regular cupcakes, these these are pretty good too. Alohomora. Rebellion. Only I could have learned Alohomora 4. Instant unlock every locked area. Because we've beaten the game. Is that another big one? Oh, it's a money one. Well, sure. I've seen it, so I must have it. All right. Well, that's actually pretty up there. Thankfully, we have fast travel spots all over the place. You can't imagine how inconvenient travel was before I invented. You're right, and I'll never imagine it. How was that sound? Remember that was an inferi. Mm. Hazel must be here somewhere. Uh, hold on. Uh. No, not like that. Arresto memento and bag. Expelia! Come on, Hazel. Arresto memento. Let's make this a little bit easier for myself. Haha! <laughs> Professor Howen will never believe this. I didn't really, uh. I didn't really recognize Hazel's code at all. Wait. What? <laughs> I have her. Hold on. Let's give it a second here.
Hello, Mrs. Bugbrook. What was it you needed help with? My friend Hazel is hiding and I was hoping you could get. She... She's in my inventory. Oh. Okay, I know what happened. <laughs> the one that got away was Hazel. I saw her name on the top of my screen when I arrested Memento the Unicorn, so I just assumed that was her. That's right. Now there should only be one unicorn here. So I can't get confused over it. Hazel, get back here! Let me also. Come on, Hazel. Arrest him. Oh, you motherfuckers. Oh, get out of here! I'm busy! Arrest the momentum. Let me also. No, they fucked up my thing. Ah, these damn spiders. Let me also. Arrest momentum. They made it so my arrest of memento didn't come back fast enough. I can take Hazel back to a vivarium now. I should let Madam Bugbrook know she's safe. <sighs> All right, now I can tell her what's going on. Mrs. Bugbrook, Betty. Madam Bugbrook, I found your unicorn friend, Hazel. Oh, what a relief. Is she all right? Are you all right? Do you have a safe place for her to stay? I do, yeah. We're both fine. And I have a safe place for her at Hogwarts. You have a kind heart, you do. I'm relieved and thankful that you'll take care of her. I shall miss my sweet pointy pony, but I know she's safer away from the poachers. <gasps> do give her a nice brushing for me, won't you? I promise take nothing. She might stay in the bag. Now. Avariums are already full, after all. All right. Well, uh, let's see where this goes. If we can get like a general idea, which it might not. That's tragic. All right. Let's see if I can figure out where this is. Where's the map? Map with floating castle, or candles. I don't remember where I got this. <laughs> we got this so long ago. Oh. Is this the bridge? Lumos. Oh. Enchanted candles. Wonder where they're heading. Yeah, I just. <laughs> wow, okay, I wouldn't have figured this out on my own. Oh my god. The candles seem to be leading into the Forbidden Forest. Yeah, which would have been a really dangerous thing to have gone into if I had gone into this mission way earlier. Again, would not have figured this out. Needing to use Lumos on a bridge at nighttime. And it wasn't really too clear to me that Treasure it was the Forbidden nearby. Forest. I suppose the picnic in the Forbidden Forest could seem romantic to some. Well, I mean, it is just a forest, just with a lot mm. of things in it. Treasure hunting suits me. All right. Uh, 31 uh, of 32. I don't know... 
where the last one is. So let's see if uh, maybe I can see it from the world map when it's zoomed out. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't track the little missions there. Although that's interesting. I didn't see that at the top right that it shows like the enemy level. I didn't realize that some of these areas were like a lot of them are 20 to 40. So like a lot of the enemies end up staying uh, with us in pace anyways. That's why I never really noticed. Especially like down here, all of these go up to 40. Well, it's interesting that these little, little places next to Hogwarts itself Totally safe for me. Nothing, nothing can make it to level 40. Not even after the game's beaten. Sheesh. All right. Well, I am going to see if I can find this side mission. I'm either going to Google and compare and contrast the list of stuff we've beaten. Or we'll go off and do the main mission. This looks like trouble. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. Oh, boy. Alright, so I, I looked at a, a list of all the side missions in the game, and it seems like this might be the one I'm missing, because, aha, look at that, wow. You can't, like, see that on the map, but, uh, the, <laughs> I was like, hmm, this mission seems like one that I, I haven't done, it's called... Uh, the Hippogriff marks the spot. Where's your centaur friends, eh? And what I have to do for it... I own a mob that was a good poster. Oh, I messed up. I'm out of camera! Oh, they sent in the reinforcements. Are we good? What? <laughs> a little surprised that you uh were turned into a barrel. Anyways, to get the side mission, you have to pick up the scroll, and I just, I just so happened to not go into this place because when we first came here. I was, uh, just not trying, hmm. trying to do a... The location marked on the map isn't far from here. Do things. It's a little bit awkward, but that works out. We'll take out the infamous foe here and g gather whatever, uh, treasure is in this place. And just in case, I'll also take that so I can see all the other little treasures. Yeah, they well, they're fighting outside. How do I get the treasure in here? Oh, what the fuck was that? Someone set off a cherry bomb? Oh my god. Revelia. Hmm, not the best place for an una- I just want to get in here. I might have to go to the other side. All right, let's cause some trouble. Oh, actually, there's an entrance over here. What's your face the talus? Ooh, destruction three. Nice. A little late. Wait, 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 what the fuck? You're the one who performed Theophilus Harlow. That was Ayano, Ayano Morgana. I've been getting yelled at about her death by numerous people. And she was still alive over here? It's really fucking awkward. Oh, 
a beast. I didn't hate. Well, that's just mean. Petrificus is a. How dare you, Petrificus Italis? You're making some say that Petrificus is a coward spell made me want to use it on him. <laughs> Did Iona have like a twin or something? Why was there a second one? <laughs> we had two sisters named Iona Morgana. The beast is safer now. All right. Where do I gotta go for my side mission? Uh, well, that's awkward. Okay, so <laughs> the mission I'm looking for, I've actually been in the place. We'll go here. I've been inside of Henrietta's hideout. We just didn't have the mission have for it at the time. Indeed, your field guide. Nope, unless you can chase me on brooms. I've got no interest in that. Although that would have been cool if you actually had enemies that could chase you around uh, on brooms and you had to like kind of fight them off a little bit. Could have been as simple as just like having like buttons to press to like deflect spells back at the people who are shooting them at you. Because obviously they didn't want to go in the direction of like actually letting you cast other spells while you're on top of a brew. Because that would be tough to balance. <laughs> but... Still, I... Uh, Stone walls do a prison make. Sometimes. I feel so safe up here. No one, one nobody... tables Professor Shaw mentioned. No one can reach me. <laughs> they complaining about how Rook candled things? Oh, that was easy. Sagittarius! That's a centaur! There's a lot of people here. <laughs> Greetings, everybody! <laughs> if you want to hide behind a yellow shield, I've got a yellow spell for you. <laughs> You! <laughs> I've been told to use the pulso I on you. I believe I defeated an Ashwinder by myself. Uh, after everything we've been through? Certainly looks to be the place. Of course I did. <laughs> of course I beat an Ashwinder. They stand no chance. All right. Oh, there's enemies in here too. Okay. Should have expected company. Wait, is that the hippogriff from my treasure map? Flipendo. Ferrucio. Yeah, right! Whoops! I used the wrong spell there. I accidentally swapped to Glacius. Hey, 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 no! I have had a cadaver of the people in this room for a very specific reason. So I can get to doing my puzzle. Alright. Uh... What am I supposed to do here? Treasure map. Alright. So we light up. Wait. I guess we have to light up the fires in a specific order. So, like. Uh. Well, up, left, right, and then. Down right. Glacier. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I can't do anything about it. Confringo! There, they're all lit now. Revelio. Weird. Because I don't think I can put any of these out. No oh, way. If I cast Glacius enough times, it might make a difference. <sighs> okay, try this again. Confringo. No! My Confringo is so explosive. Confringo. Oh my goodness. Glacius. All right, and then Confringo. this one. Perfect. Let's see what we've got. Uh -huh. This must be what all the fuss was about. Treasure Seeker's Glove. The Good Samaritan. Fantastic. And that got me level 39. Goodness. We did it. We've done 100% of the quests. And then I can get this troll thing. I think there were a couple of the rewards I didn't grab. These astronomy table ones. And then I'm not gonna... <laughs> we're good. I did 94% of the challenges. That makes me happy enough. Wait, hold on. Did I discover all enemy types? No. Who the, who the hell was I missing? Death's Dark Mongrel. These murderous beasts only er, obey only death, leading souls to him at every opportunity. Death Stroll. These monstrosities are conjured by death himself. Only the most powerful magic can overcome them. Eh. Well, I got my little treasure. We can get out of here. It's funny that in the end... We didn't even hit level 40, but I guess that's because, I, I don't know, I did every side mission. So I don't really know what else was supposed to level me up, I guess it was just collecting stuff. I'm not the biggest fan of when games do that, it's like, oh, the only way to hit max level is to do literally all of the collectibles. <laughs> like, no, I don't, that's not really what I want to do. Sometimes I'm fine. You've made marvelous improvements here. Sometimes I'm fine just fighting a bunch of enemies and leveling up that way. Mm. No upgrades, even after all of that. Wow. That's a shame. But I guess it makes sense. The stuff we found was before we hit level 39. Alright. Let's go to class. You know what that means. As much as I do like this outfit. Uh, let's get my... Fancy robes here. You know, the distinguished look is really nice. But I'll go for this. Where's something with like a green skirt? Why are there no green skirts? Or good ones at least. A good combination. This is like one of the only ones. Alright. 
Let's see what Professor Weasley has to say to us. That young'un's now a teacher herself. It's a wonder she's not cobbled up by her own <laughs> Is he talking about Professor Garlic? It's amusing. Oh, wait, hold up. You know, it's been a while since we, we gave a kitty a pat. There you go. Enjoy. Yeah, you're welcome. Ugh. Liminal. <laughs> Classroom feels so weird at night. I know I've been in here in the night before, but this this time I took it in. Professor Weasley, you wanted to see me. I did. We haven't had a chance to speak since... I know you were quite close with Professor Fig. Hogwarts won't be the same without him. No, it won't. But I can assure you that he would want us to press on, and that he would rest easy knowing that the future of the wizarding world is in hands like yours. He Thank said you, something like Professor. that. You've had quite a year, both inside and outside of Hogwarts. Yeah. I've heard all sorts of rumors. You've ridden a Graphorn, befriended a goblin, Rescued hippogriffs? Even took it upon yourself to help Professor Black's house elf. How did you... It's harder to keep secrets around here than one might suspect. <laughs> I'm just glad you found such a good friend in Miss Sweeting. It's nice to see her engaging more with her classmates. There have evidently been Snidget sightings in the area lately. If the centaurs are to be believed, two Hogwarts students are behind it. Convenient. I'm certain I don't know what... No need to discuss it further. What I would like to discuss is your wizard's field guide. May I see it? Of course. I have filled it out quite a bit. Not 100%, but like quite a lot considering things. What do you think, Professor? I think you've been busy this year. Yeah. I see some progress here, but quite a bit of your field guide has yet to be completed. Fortunately, you do have some time to prepare for your OWLs. I will confess, I had a sense about you from that first moment you came bursting in late to the sorting ceremony. I am pleased to see that my instincts were correct. To think you've only been with us a year and you'll already be taking your OWLs, well, it's nothing short of astonishing. Thank you, Professor, for everything. You are most welcome. I look forward to seeing what you do during the rest of your time with us. Well, it depends on what you have for me to do here. Because I think we have one more mission to do. I'm not tracking anything. Hold on. The House Cup. I should attend the end of year feast in the Great Hall. Hey, I mean, if all that's left to do is have a great feast, <laughs> I'm down. Let's go hang out with everybody. I thought there was going to be something more. Like actually go off and do the uh, OWLs myself. Montage! something <laughs> ah, doesn't matter now I guess oh, 
was that the sound I heard during that first part of the cutscene? The armor getting beaten up back here? Jeez. This year we have seen our students exemplify the bravery of Godric Gryffindor. And now we can finish the loyalty of Helga the wisdom of Rowena Ravenclaw. And the ambition of Salazar Slytherin. Yeah. And so the winner of this year's house cup. Excuse me, Headmaster, if I may. One particular student's heroism during the attack on Hogwarts, not to mention the level to which they have excelled in their coursework as a new student, no less. Uh, hey! Well, it would seem that it certainly merits, oh, I'd say, 100 points to their house. Wouldn't you agree? Ah, yes. Thank you, Professor Weasley. Make it a thousand! I saved the world! I suppose we have our winner! But you're welcome, Slytherin House! Yep, it was all me! That one's kind of bittersweet, considering what happened with Sebastian. <laughs> it's like, woo, Slytherin won! All right! Who were, who were my major friends in Slytherin? All right, Ominous and Sebastian, and we, uh, killed a person. Oh! And now Sebastian's locked up. Well, or at least, I don't remember exactly what happened. He's expelled, at the very least. Probably will be spending time in Azkaban. That's the only jail I'm aware of they have, really. But, uh... Alright! I guess that brings... Hogwarts Legacy to a close, at least for now. I don't know if they'll ever do, like, a DLC for this game. Or if they'll just do a sequel. Hopefully they just... Honestly, I just hope they do a sequel. I'd rather them do that than try and, like, bring us back in one or two times uh, into this current version, but I also wouldn't mind a mix of whatever. We can have DLCs, we can have other games. That works for me. But, alright, this was pretty enjoyable, uh, all things considered. I figured that it would be a pretty confident game, and that's pretty much what it is. I wouldn't say it's like a great game, uh, unless you're like a really big Harry Potter fan, then it's probably like a really like, oh, this is this is everything potentially what a Harry Potter fan might want. But for me, uh, there are a lot of things that it did that was very different than what I was hoping the game would end up being. But overall, it was still pretty fun in terms of like an enjoyability rating. I'd probably put it at a nice, like, 8 out of 10. It was pretty enjoyable. There were quite a few things that they did well, and then there were some things that I wish would have seen, like, a pretty big improvement on. Um, things they did well. Uh, obviously, Hogwarts Castle in and of itself was a pretty fun location to see in, like, a higher fidelity game form. I think the last time we got a, a Harry Potter game would have been, it was either like a mobile game or like the PS2, like the last Harry Potter game I ever touched was a PlayStation 2 game. So like obviously the massive difference uh, from that to this PlayStation 5 Hogwarts Legacy game. I mean, it's also on PC where it looks pretty good as well. Um, but yeah, they did a pretty good job of that. The Hogsmeade feels fun. A lot of things just feel fun 
It's got a very lively atmosphere all around. I'd say the only part where it starts to lack is it's open world while it has like these fun little ruins to explore and these fun little puzzles to do. Uh, a lot of the open world area does feel very, very much like fluff. There's a lot of open spaces which don't really do anything for us as like the players, which, you know, like, obviously there's always going to be like, oh, it's a hillside. What's on the hillside? Nothing. It's just a place where vegetation grows and maybe some animals are running about. Um, I get that. But like in terms of just like the consistency and rewards of exploring, it felt really lacking. Uh, you know, you do the puzzles to go into these caves and then you would get a green item. That happened a lot. A green item or a blue item or a purple item. Things that I just didn't need by like end game or even like mid game for a very long time. It was just us using orange items once we could like actually upgrade things. And that's where I, I think things start to kind of like falter a little bit. Like it's nice that we had the room of requirements. That was like a fun little system. But like the most I did in the room of requirements was done very early on of like, okay, I've got the money. I planted all these things in there and now I can make like a bunch of potions, but there's no real, there's not a lot of depth to it. Like by end game, there wasn't really a reason. Like I was full on everything. I could basically become full on anything at any moment if I ran out. Uh, I really didn't have a reason to spam potions or like not, not not health potions, but like the other potions, the focus potion, the maxima potions, Adurus, Thunder Brew. Those were just kind of around like they were fun to use in the times that I did use them, but they were also like clunky to use, like trying to swap to some of them in the middle of battle. I would like hold L1, I would move my cursor over to the item, and then I would press L1 and I would use the last item picked. Rather than, like, it wouldn't swap. It was just very odd in that regard. Um, and then it was a shame that, like, a lot of the upgrades, I feel like the upgrades for all the items should have been things to spend money on. That was another problem I had. By end game, there really wasn't anything for me to buy. Uh, that I cared about. Everything that they wanted you to buy that wasn't, like, an animal ingredient that you could just farm yourself eventually, which was nice, but it really did give you, like, there was no incentive to spend your money except if you wanted, like, cosmetics for your broom, which I didn't care about too much. Like, I looked at my broom a couple of times in terms of, like, appreciating its aesthetics, but then after that, I largely never looked at it again. I just used it. Um... Because obviously, you know, for the most part, from your from your perspective, you're just seeing like the tail end of the broom because you're looking from behind. So you see the tail end of the broom and some wood. And that's all <laughs> that's all they would have been for for a lot of them. Although maybe, you know, again, I didn't really buy any. So maybe they had like bigger differences, like maybe they had like a trail difference or something. Um, but yeah, I wish that we could have gotten a little bit more depth in like the gear system. It was very... Like it was very surface level and like a little bit, little bit lower than that, which was nice. But again, I would, I would have liked it to go way further. So I had something to do in Endgame to spend all those resources that I grew, especially since it was very mean. It was like very tedious work to manage all of that stuff. Like I cut a lot of the instances, but like going to the vivarium to like feed, going to the vivariums to feed the animals, to like brush the animals and to have to do that basically 30 plus times. Um, because you know, I had like 36 plus animals for a very, very long time. That took a lot. And I really didn't actually get a lot of reward. I like cons all things considered the amount of times I went in to, to take care of the animals versus the amount of resource I actually spent was not worth it. <laughs> it really wasn't that worth it. Um, which is a shame. It would have been, it, it really should have gone further. I should have been able to get some cooler little things that maybe changed up the game drastically. That's another thing that kind of was a shame was yeah, they really did make the talent system uh it, it peters out 
by the end, which I guess is fine because as you saw, we didn't even hit level 40. And I guess because I, I didn't realize it until that last bit there that in order to get to like max level 40 in that they just legitimately wanted you to go off and like, I guess, do collectible hunting, which I I don't like. I don't like tying uh, max level in the game to tedious tasks like go rub your face on a wall and pick up a page. Does the page give you lore? No, it's just like a little puzzle that raises a number up. I don't like that. Uh, and then even like the Merlin trials, while those were fun, a lot of them were very much the same. Like they were just the same puzzles over and over and over and over again, spread out like 70 plus times. I think I saw that maybe there's like 90 Merlin trials in the game. Um, but I don't actually know. That's just something I, I, I saw briefly on Twitter. Uh, but it would have been nice if the puzzles had been far more unique or if like they had, at least for the Merlin trials, we got rewards all the way to the end of them. Then I would have done all of the Merlin trials, just like I did all of the ancient magic. Um, that's what makes me really like go for the collectibles is when it actually gives me like a tangible in-game benefit, not just like here's an okay looking outfit. Uh, if they were cool looking outfits, then maybe, you know, that would be a big difference, but it didn't seem like there was any real big benefit for me to do the field guide at all. In terms of everything else, uh, I didn't really like how the story ended up being for this. For me, you know, while I'm not like a Harry Potter, like fan, um, I still was interested in the idea of Hey, here's a game where you're coming in, you're a Hogwarts student, and you're not like Harry Potter. You know, it, it, it's not one of the Harry Potter games where you're playing as Harry Potter and you're playing the story that plays out in the books relatively. No, this was like, okay, you're in the Hogwarts universe, you know, we're taking place a hundred years in the past, which, eh, I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, but really, I don't... I don't like that we basically got what we get in a lot of games where it's like, oh, we're, we're the most specialist person of them all. We have the ability to tap into a magic that only like a handful of people have ever been able to do. And that power is so, so good that I can take on hundreds of dark wizard adults that nobody else engages with. And that I am just constantly fighting as I casually explore the countryside and the same thing with the dark you know with the the goblin army uh took on hundreds of them and it it just kind of plays out really odd because yeah at the end of the day we're supposed to be like a student who's like brand new to like everything like we're a student who comes in behind on on everything and it doesn't really play out like that um, and I think there are ways that you could have made, still had like a fun combat system and fun story without it having to be, oh, we're saving the wizarding world and stopping this big magic power source. Uh, it, it, it reminds me of the problem that we kind of have in a lot of like the hero movies that we're getting where like the stakes, you know, it's the origin movie of the hero, but the stakes aren't like a localized thing. It's like, oh, if this happens, the world's in danger. And that's what it would have happened here. Yeah, Hogwarts would have been destroyed and uh, Ranrock would have ran off to kill all wizard kind. That's basically the world at that point, because the wizard, while wizard kind keeps itself relatively hidden from like normal humans, uh, they're still there, like they live side by side with with muggles. So if the wizard kind had been destroyed, what would have stopped Ranrock from then also going like, okay, we're gonna reveal ourselves to humans and then use this power to like subjugate regular humans. Uh, we don't really go into that at all, but like it probably would have happened. But that's like, that's what the stakes are from, from the gate, <laughs> you know, from the get go. The stakes are super high, our character is super powerful, and every single person is in awe of our amazingness. And that's just not what I was like personally looking for. Um, Cause I feel like it's very played out. It would have just been cool to be like, I'm a regular student who might be like 
above average in like competence. But I still have to like learn things. Like one thing I was really hoping, uh, while I've never like beaten the Rockstar game Bully, I've dabbled in it and there's cool little mechanics in there where you actually have to like go to class and like maintain a schedule and do little mini games in the class. Uh, and there's obviously in the game Bully a huge focus on the students in that school and the people all around that school. And that's what I was kind of hoping for here. I just wanted a game like Bully, but instead it's wizards and witches in the Hogwarts world where uh, all of our problems are just like things going on with the students. And like, obviously things could still be extreme, like to the extent that we saw with like Poppy or Sebastian or Natty, where it's like, okay, we're still dealing with like the poachers. Those are bad guys, but we can like deal with them. Uh, we're dealing with magical beasts that are around the area. Like you can still have all those things without my character being so absolutely crazy effective <laughs> that uh, I, 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 by the end of the game, I've killed hundreds upon hundreds of enemies. And even even then, even if you keep all of the, the, the effect, and if just in terms of what I wanted, it would have been nice to have had way more side missions with all the different characters. Like we have a good number of named side characters in this, uh, but there's a lot of them that we only do like one side mission for or two side missions for, and then we never talk to them ever again. Like there's a lot of them that I don't really like remember the name of. And obviously that's on me because it took me two months to get through the game overall. But I can only really remember, like I remember a meat. <laughs> yeah, I remember a meat because he gets name dropped a bunch and he was kind of like a, a silly character that popped up a, 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 a couple of times. But again, he didn't really, he, he didn't really do much. Um, a lot of characters just didn't get love. And I was always very envious of those sections where we would do the assignments that like made us go to class and we saw like a montage of our character hanging out with the other people and people just having fun in class. That's, that's what I want. I want to get more like involved in the stories going on inside the school itself. Because obviously the stakes for people who are magically inclined are still like, you know, it's not going to be super boring. You can have like an interesting student life slice of life game where people are trying to like cast curses on each other, like pranks, all these different things that we could handle, but it just didn't play out that way. And that's kind of what drags it down for me to being more like an A rather than being like, oh, this is fantastic. This is a nine, a nine out of 10, a 10 out of 10. Uh, another thing in terms of like combat, uh, one, it was really, it was kind of sad that by like, within like three to five hours of the game, you fought everything. You have fought every single type of enemy basically that you were going to continually encounter for like the rest of the game. The only differences are like very small sub differences between them. And that was kind of a shame considering that uh, this is a magic inclined universe and there could be way more differences between the enemies, especially like the Dark Wizards. Even, even just like faction wise, it just got really tiring fighting. I'm fighting poachers and I'm fighting dark, you know, and I'm fighting the Ashwinders. What's the difference between them? Eh, <laughs> well, so the, the Ash Winders are a little bit tankier. But by the end of the game, everything just kind of blurs into like, I'm shooting the yellow bubble with a yellow spell. Or I'm casting Vatacadavra. Or my curses. And so the combat, I wish, would have been mechan way more mechanically interesting than it actually ends up being. Uh, and again, like the, the lack of variety in enemies kind of plays into that as well, because while they have, you know, it looks like an extensive list. They have 69 different enemy types in the game. 
supposedly. <laughs> uh, some, some of the enemies on that list might have been the infamous enemies, which were just the regular enemies with a different skin. So that was maybe it was more like 50-ish varieties of enemies. A large majority of them were just like, here's a here's like 15 shades of goblin. Here's like 20 different types of dark wizards that I largely can't tell the difference between. And again, that's a shame. That that's something that could have been mitigated had they gone in the direction of like your character is somewhat powerful and capable of defending themselves, but you're not like fighting uh, like 30 wizards at, at a time or something. Obviously, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it, it, that's what it came down to. You, you just you would go into a combat encounter. And maybe there'd be like three people there, but then you would get like an extra wave, an extra wave. Like that's what the Rookwood fight was. Just like here's seven enemies and then a little quick time event and then like another seven enemies that was oh kind of it ended up being kind of disappointing how that played out um same thing with the way that ran rocks fight played out i wish ran rocks fight was less about being like this spectacle dragon fight to look all cool and shit and would have been more about like all right he's got a wand and he's using the same spells like as you and he's as powerful as you and it's more about like actually using the right spells in the right way to take him out rather than just being like ah, I'm shooting purple at purple and red at red and yellow at yellow But overall, again, you know, that's that's me kind of, a lot of that's my, just the way I feel. I've played a lot of open world games at this point. Um, and this, this does a decent job of uh, being an okay game. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, or, or, you know, even good. I just can't give a great... What would have brought it to great again? Even even if they didn't change anything about the combat or the combat variety, just more interesting side missions. You know, again, one of the problems I had at the end of the game was I didn't care about the professors because they also faded off into the background very very quickly. Like if you take things from like the gameplay perspective, there was a good this this let's play is like about forty five to fifty hours long. For a good 20 to 30 hours, I didn't interact with any of these teachers. For half of the game, <laughs> a very, a pretty lengthy game, I never dealt with them ever again. And then they just showed up. And I barely even remembered their names, but they were there to like do fancy stuff. And again, and it just goes to show like they come in and they show you what, like, the adult wizards are supposed to be like in this universe. Like, really super capable. They were capable of taking on Ranrock's army themselves. But instead, it had been all up to us. And that, that, that actually reminds me of another, another thing I was wanting that I talked about earlier. It would have been nice if we had been able to have companions with us. That would have been huge. Uh, because it could have it just been all student companions... It would have given us more instances of like, okay, just give them more lines, allow them to flesh themselves out. That could have been how they used all the characters that didn't get like big side quests. They could have just been companion NPCs that that come along with us who have like a specialized ability tree or something. Like, oh, the you know, Poppy uses uh, these particular spells. Sebastian uses dark arts and like fire spells. Uh, Amit uses more like force spells and then and, and sometimes maybe Wingardium Leviosa for some reason That could have been another way that could have been cool Especially because then if you have like a companion character that also gives you a way to like get all those resources I was talking about and throw it at them because then you would have two characters or even more five ten characters to like outfit and all these different things that we're getting uh, that would have been, that would have been really, really cool. Especially because, again, just the, the, the notion of our character basically being like, I don't know, like a 14 or 15 year old running around in the countryside completely on her own is 
<laughs> against adult wizards who are supposed to be drastically stronger than them. Just ridiculous. But yeah, that's basically most of my thoughts on the game itself. I'm going to skip this because this just seems like they've got so many more credits to go through there. Holy shit. The Seeker of Knowledge. Complete the House Cup. Why can't I move? Oh, jeez. Okay. I was just locked into position there. At the end, no one ended up being in our room. That's another sad thing. I didn't have roommates. Like, clearly I do in universe, but as the player, I have always woken up here completely on our own. Where's, like, the slumber parties? Where's, you know, that was something that happened a lot in, like, the Harry Potter movies was, like, the time spent inside of the common room where the characters talked and hung out. So, eh. come on, come on. Where's the tentacle? Maybe it's the first one? Maybe it doesn't show up again. <laughs> the tentacle already waved high, so it doesn't, doesn't care. But all right. That was Hogwarts Legacy. Overall, it's a competent game. I enjoyed myself. I'm glad to have played through it. Uh, if they do another one, I might check it out, depending on, on how things are <laughs> in the world at the time, or with myself at the time. Um, if they do a DLC, maybe I'll check that out as well. We will find out. But for what it is... This has been a fine game, and I think for anybody who was, like, really into Harry Potter, it probably was even to, like, a great game. Like, maybe even, like, even, maybe even just being in the Slytherin room is enough for them to be, like, super duper duper happy. But, thank you guys for watching this Let's Play. Apologies, apologies to the people who were watching this as it was coming out, and that it took me two months to get through it. But this was a long game, and then there were some other games that had come out in that time as well. But, thank you guys for watching this Let's Play. I'll see you guys in the next one.